The Etruscans were also master workers of gold and noted for their gold wire, or filigree as it was called, and the little dots of gold on their works known as granulation. Fred Zweig is a famous Arizona metalsmith, and he's also a historian of metals. And we've asked Fred to see if he could help us figure out what these ancient Etruscans did in making this beautiful gold filigree and granulation. And what are we going to do here? I'm creating this design here, something that was used in Etruscan times you know, on some of the decorations. I'm separating out evenly these uh, snippets that I've created. The Etruscans were known to have made some that were a tenth of a millimeter in diameter. They must have had incredible eyesight, Fred, and, and it seems to me they couldn't have done it for a very long period of time. I suspect that uh, they used kids to lay this out. Uh -huh. So now I'm gonna, going to light the torch and um, yeah, I'm going to have to have my eyebrows uh, <laughs> uh, grow back after that. So now I will carefully heat until these guys form little spheres. Many times you actually do find um, samples like that where they're not quite perfectly round, but they didn't want to spend the time to yeah. do them again. So these are what we call the granules of the granulation. That's what they are. That is correct. And you don't realize until you sit down with someone like yourself uh, the amazing amount of work and detail uh, that goes into it and the, and the amount of eye strain that would yes. be produced in doing this kind of thing over a period of time. This is the copper that allows the granules to, to bind together. And I'm going to use a mandrel here. Mandrel is just a shape for me to wrap this wire around. Okay. I didn't know you could do so many things with gold, moving it around and changing shapes. And... It's, it's, it's wonderful material. Yeah. It's, it's one of the most malleable of all metals. Such fine work. One thing I'm learning from this is I have to go and get uh, my eyes checked. <laughs> it's just so fine and so detailed. The Etruscan workshops that were turning these things out would probably, as you say, use children for their eyes, and you'd probably be apprenticing at a very young age then. Well, this is a very delicate moment of the operation here. By propping it on this little nest of iron binding wire, where the heat can actually tackle it from the from all sides, from underneath. It must be very difficult to get the, the little granules to be of the same size. That is the, the, the trick, trick of trying to cut them all the same. Yeah. And then after you do that, I've cut out some steps here because uh, I didn't want to take the time to sort every single one of these. And so on ancient Etruscan works, we actually can see that the granules do vary. You have the feeling, looking at the work, that there is a, a similarity of size that's really quite remarkable. I think it gives you a real appreciation of how difficult the ancient technique was. And I thank you very much for giving us a chance to have that special window back in time. I will never look at any of these uh, pieces of filigree or granulation in the same way again. Mm -hmm.